Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I would like to cordially invite you to another installment of my Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke run with no items allowed in battle. This is the first installment uh, in the titular run that I just named here on this year's channel. Of course, it's certainly not the first Pokemon Nuzlocke run that I've done. I've prior to this uh, done Pokemon Nuzlocke runs in both Pokemon Emerald Cross, which was a fun little quality of life uh, hack slash mod of Pokemon Emerald, and plain mean Jean Pokemon Leaf Green with some fun little prize wheel shenanigans. But there is no prize wheel involved in this particular little stream that we are about to get into. Hello to Tuples1 and Silos. Glad to see the two of you in the chat here today. Uh, don't you worry, I am not going to waste too much more time. I do want to say real quick, as usual, that if you are currently enjoying the stream you're currently watching, don't forget you can catch it live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST here on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live. Uh, and of course, after the fact on YouTube, uh, where my VODs will publish every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, without further ado, let's jump right Right into this. Um, so originally, I was actually planning on streaming Pokemon Pearl, and funny thing, I actually went and searched on uh, Twitch. Hey, like how many people right now are uh, currently streaming Pokemon Pearl? And Pokemon Pearl didn't even really come up as like a category that I could search in, and that clued me into something that I kind of suspected when I was doing the Pokemon Leaf Green run, but I didn't perhaps fully come to grips with at the time, which is that I think I made a bit of a mistake choosing to play Pokemon Leaf Green for that run and not Fire Red. Um, the thing is, is that, you know, I think that when people think about the Fire Red Leaf Green games, they instinctively go first to Fire Red because, of course, you know, you're going to go to the game that features Charizard prominently on the front of the box. And I think I might have done myself a disservice and potentially lowered my discoverability by specifically making it a leaf green stream. Uh, hello to CTO the Bro. Uh, to answer your question, Tuples One, how was my week last week? Uh, it was pretty good. I kind of, I don't want to say that it was a kind of perfectly restful week because the weeks on which I'm not streaming, I'm still doing a ton of work. That being said, it actually didn't take me that much time to set up the current layout that you see right in front of you here. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit modified for my Game Boy Advance layout. Uh, because now we have both the upper and lower screen, although the uh, lower screen right now is only displaying uh, not a whole lot exactly, but that will change once, once we get into the game proper and we get our Poketch and the whole shebang. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, it's been a little while since I last played Platinum. I did not play Pokemon Platinum um, with the same level of frequency as I played some of the other Pokemon games back in the day, but I, I came to really kind of love it over time. Of course, I love the fact that once you got to the end of Pokemon Platinum, um, you were able to access a whole new Battle Frontier, albeit a Battle Frontier that I don't love as much as the Emerald Battle Frontier, and that I think is actually a, a little bit more... Um, unfair and unforgiving than the Emerald Battle Frontier. I've actually never beaten it all the way to, through. I never beat the the Battle Factory and one other... Uh, I never beat the facility where, like, you have to specifically keep going with, like, one Pokemon. And you can change up its moves or nature and whatnot, but you specifically have to stay with one Pokemon. I am... Um, hold on. I've been talking at a mile a minute. I've not been paying too much attention to what's going on right now in the game. I am real disappointed. I was really hoping that I would finally be able to have uh, a name that is longer than seven characters, but apparently that is not possible. So I am just going to be cozy once again for this run. Hopefully when we get to the Gen 5 games, eventually we can call ourselves Cozy Bear. All right. But yeah, um, so like, oh, what do we want to call this guy? Uh, I know... I honestly had completely forgotten about this dude, to be honest. One of the more forgettable rivals, I would say. Uh, I am gonna call this guy... Da, da, da. I've not even thought of, like, a naming scheme. Uh, Lil Bish. Uh, CTO the bro says I should call him Lil Bish. Okay, let me see. Alright, I won't be able to put a space between Lil and Bish. But... 
we will certainly go with that. And there we go. We are on our way. So yeah, um, the, the thing about Pokemon Platinum is I distinctly remember my time with Pokemon Platinum being one of my first times playing the Pokemon games where I actually kind of caught a little bit of Pokemon fatigue and stopped playing the game for a little bit. I um, re distinctly remember getting to like either the second gym or just before the second gym and stopping uh, playing that game for like a really, really long time. And then I remember months and months later, it was like a, later on in the same year, I finally came back to it. And I remember initially being so just unenthused about having to kind of come back to it. Um, but uh, eventually I kind of got back in the groove of it and I really enjoyed myself. <sighs> uh, of course, you know, uh, Pokemon Platinum, in addition to featuring some like cool new areas and new Pokemon that you can catch, um, also has um, some like nice little quality of life improvements. Like surfing is a lot better in this game. I think I made the right choice choosing this game over Pokemon Pearl. By the way, I did quite a bit of um, testing ahead of time of this stream to make sure that my current new layout would function as good as it possibly could. Uh, I did notice there was a little bit of flickering earlier on the lower DS screen, which is weird that it was just on the lower screen and not on the whole layout. Um, if you notice any weird visual oddi oddities, a little bit of weird uh, audio oddities, uh, things of that nature, by all means, let me know in the chat and together I will stream doctor my way through my issues and figure out how to get on the other side with a superb Pokemon streaming experience for you all. Uh, before we go any further, uh, hold on, I, I got a little bit confused for a sec because in these games, uh, from here on, you have to press the X button or on my PlayStation 4 controller, the triangle button uh, to open up your options. You no longer press the start or select button. We're going to change the text speed to fast. And uh, you know what? We might as well change up the frame. Let's see. I never, I don't recall, like I definitely remember changing up the frame in Pokemon Emerald a lot. I don't remember ever really changing it up in Platinum. We got some interesting options here. I like this one kind of. This is pretty elaborate. Mm. Oh, you have the classic one over here, of course. Uh... I kind of like this one. I'm going to go with this one. And there we go. Letting us know once again. It's weird. Just how... Well, CTO the bro <laughs> just clipped something out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'll have to check that out a bit later. Uh, it is weird just how similar all these games start. You're up in your basement room, come down, mom's chatting about something or other while watching the TV, and that's kind of it. And of course we get the, you know, normal, uh, as expected, little chat about not going out into the tall grass. So I want to take just a quick little second to talk about something. Um, I remember when Pokemon Platinum was first announced. Um, one of the first things that came out about it before we even knew about any of the um, new Pokemon that were going to be in this game um, was the fact that your characters would be wearing kind of uh, warmer winter clothing and that you would be able to kind of like more visibly see like snow and coldness throughout the game. Like, for example, in the original version of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, this snow that you can see right here in the corner of Little Root Town. Wait, is it Little Root Town? No, it's this is Sand Gem Town, right? Whatever. It's the beginning town of the game. This particular section of snow was not originally in the first town of the game in Diamond and Pearl. They added it here. And I remember Cerebi.net reporting on this at the time being like, yeah, one of the new changes that is coming to Pokemon Platinum is that seemingly there is some sort of unusual, uh, unnatural phenomena that is causing the entire region to become colder. And I was thinking, oh, like, is that the result of whatever legendary Pokemon you're going to have to fight at the end of the game. 
And no, it's just purely an aesthetic choice. There's no actual explanation given as to why the region is becoming colder. I guess the world of Pokemon is experiencing like an inverted version of global warming where everything is coming way colder. That makes any sense? Actually, that's... I mean, technically, climate change involves, like, temperatures just drastically... Twin Leaf Town, there we go. Climate change involves temperatures, like, drastically becoming both hotter and colder, depending on the season, so... I don't know. I don't know what to really make of this. There's not... I actually probably shouldn't be wasting too much time in here, because... A lot of the people that hang out in Twin Leaf Town don't really have a lot of super relevant or important things to say. They don't have also a whole lot of um, items to give me either, so I might as well head on my way. Thank you once again, by the way, to everybody for tuning out to the debut stream of my Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke. I'm happy that uh, this here debut is getting so much attention. I don't quite, um, my intention for this uh, streaming series is I don't have like anything particularly special planned in terms of there being like a prize wheel or anything of that nature. Uh, I'm not going to like do push-ups every time I accidentally land a critical hit or what have you, uh, but I still think this is going to be a lot of fun. I am interested in seeing how the kind of no um, items and battle rule is going to kind of affect the way that I play. Uh, my, my decision to go with that, by the way, it's inspired by this uh, one YouTuber that I follow uh, who does these Pokemon challenges. His name is Ma Drybread, M A H dash uh, dry dash bread. Uh, he does fun Pokemon challenges where it's like, oh man, I'm going to beat the entirety of Pokemon Emerald uh, entirely using a Kecleon. Uh, and I can't use any items in battle, can't use any exploits, etc., etc. Let's just see if I can do it, uh, and or, like, how fast I can do it. Well, 10 million Poké Dollars, that is a lot. Also, a sign of the times, a Nintendo Wii. This was actually, I mean, this was actually peak Nintendo Wii, because this game came out, it came out in either 2006 or 2007, I don't remember which year exactly, but that is, like, right at the height of the bright white little console's kind of reign of Nintendo domination. So that's pretty cool. All right, here we go. This seems incredibly dangerous. I'm glad we managed to meet up with Professor Rowan. One thing I will say is I do kind of wish that the current time in the day was maybe a little bit brighter. That's actually... Wow, I, I wasn't even paying attention, and I just said that I don't truly love Pokemon. I'm a bad girl. Oh, here we go. I, I completely... When they introduced uh, What's-His-Face over here with the blonde hair, I had completely forgotten that the other male or female version of the rival is also in the game. That's right, he's the professor's helping hand. In the future, I might need to look into possibly modifying the in-game clock for the game, because I don't love the fact that right now the screen is a little bit on the darker side because it is nighttime in the game. I would like it to be a little bit brighter out whenever I play it.
All right, here we go. It is briefcase time. Now, does anybody here have any particular preference into what Pokemon I should be choosing here? I will start off by saying this. Uh, I distinctly remember choosing uh, Turtwig as my original starter back when I played Pokemon Platinum for the first time back in the day. And so I feel like I already have quite a bit of experience with the little grass turtle. Um, on the other hand, Piplup and... Um, what's his face? Uh, Chimchar. Not as much experience with them. Silas seems to agree with me. Anything but grass every time. You know what? I know that some people might take umbrage with the fact that I'm choosing yet another firefighting starter. But I think that it might be fun to go with Chimchar. The thing about Chimchar is that, you know, he might become more powerful later on, but he is a bit of a glass cannon, and on top of that, he actually won't be very effective against the uh, first gym leader we're going to be facing off against, which might actually make for a good little challenge. So let's go with that. And there we go. Now, does he have any Pokemon of his own if he's wandering into the grass like that? Hmm. You know that this is what we were meant to do. Hold on. While this battle is getting queued up, it is a little bit hot in here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take off my sweater. Put on the sweater this morning because I was biking to work and I wanted to put something on that would keep me nice and toasty, but now I do not need it. So we're gonna schlep that over there to the side. And with that, wow, I am really way sweatier than I thought I would be. Okay, here we go. Uh, I mean, not a whole lot else to do. I will say, when I was uh, initially creating this setup, I had half a mind to actually not even have the lower screen be part of the setup because I really kind of love the appearance of my Game Boy Advance layout where it was just the screen, my head cam, and the chat. Um, and there, I was also contemplating, well, maybe I can get rid of the chat and just have my head cam, the upper screen, and the lower screen. But I'm glad that I was able to fit everything in here. It's great to have the, you know, chat displaying uh, what my lovely guests have to say. Uh, and it's also great to show what's going on on the lower screen because there's actually some really vital information and nice little graphics are displayed there.
Um, and uh, what that has meant is that I kind of have to keep lunches and dinners relatively simple, not get super indulgent in terms of having a lot of heavy foods. Uh, but I am at day 28. I am just about over the hump, and I am uh, quite pleased with the fact that I was able to hang on for this long. That being said, it was a little bit tough to find kind of Whole30 compliant snacks for uh, my snacks and collation sections of this stream, which, by the way, this stream will be having. Don't you forget it. Also, we learned Ember already, which is great. And here we go, San Jim Town. Uh-oh. Well, I am glad that he is happy considering we almost brushed with death in that one last battle. Oh, I... Huh, interesting. They didn't give you the chance to give it a nickname earlier, but now you get to give it a nickname. Okay, so here's the thing. I have not yet thought of what I want the um, naming scheme uh, for this particular Nuzlocke run to be. First Nuzlocke run I did, um, which was uh, Pokemon... Uh, Emerald Cross, the naming scheme there was Biomical Character Names. Uh, second uh, Nuzlocke Challenge I did, Pokemon Leaf Green. Hello to Cozy underscore Game underscore Dev. Nice to have you in the chat tonight. Second Nuzlocke stream I did with Pokemon Leaf Green, naming scheme was Food. I'm trying to figure out what I should have it be this time. As for funny, it would be funny if I did like Digimon names, but I don't know if thing is, is I don't necessarily have that great of a knowledge of them Digimon names beyond like, you know, some of the original names from the original adventure series. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. One one idea that came to mind is maybe I can name them after a video game series, but I feel like a lot of video game series names will get a little bit long. Um, Tuples one, by the way, asks, uh, have you noticed a change in yourself? Uh, I definitely have lost a little bit of weight. You know, there are some people on the Whole30 diet that claim that, like, eventually, like, y you start developing, like, crazy, super high-level energy, uh, like, halfway through the diet and it, it like completely changes your life and blah 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 it, it hasn't really done that for me but like I generally tended to eat like not that bad before the diet I would have like entire days here and there where I just try to avoid sugars and grains altogether so yeah there is that uh, duh, duh, duh. you know what I got an idea I got an idea let's name our Pokemon after cities. I'm going to call Chimchar Montreal after the name of the famed city that I'm currently sitting inside of. This is actually going to be pretty fun. Yes, I am. Ooh, you know what would have been a good idea? I'll probably have to think of this for a future Nuzlocke stream. Uh, naming my Pokemon off of, off of um, the 50 states of the United States. Because, like, inevitably in a Nuzlocke run, there are only so many Pokemon you can capture. There are probably only, like, 40 to 50 Pokemon you can get in total, you know, based on, like, just the number of routes in the game that are available to you which means that like theoretically you could have a pokemon for every state in the game <clears throat> plus like i guess if you wanted to if you wanted to kind of round things out you could include like puerto rico or whatever if you end up going to like 51 washington dc for 52 
And here we go. Good old Pokédex. All right, I am I, I'm enjoying a lot of this exposition. I think that the the quality of the writing in this game is like a genuine step up from where it was at in Gen three. Not that the writing in the Gen three games was bad, but I am I'm pretty pretty itching right now to actually go out and catch some Pokemon. Oh my god! So still so much exposition. Wow! Already giving you a TM. And it's actually a really useful move. I gotta say, I feel like Madrybred, which is the YouTuber that inspired this run, probably really appreciates doing Platinum runs, because if he's playing as a really shitty Pokémon, like, I don't know, like a Ninkata or whatever, he probably appreciates being able to get, like, returns so soon off the bat, because it's such a good, useful move that so many Pokémon can use. Right, so this is the big improvement that they brought to these games is that now, depending on where you're at in the story, uh, you can straight up get like every possible item from any Pokemart in the game. You don't have to fly to like different Pokemarts in different cities to get certain items. Okay. going to chat with these people real quick because and I've talked about this in my past streams you never know if you're going to encounter someone in a house somewhere that has some sort of item to give you that will make your run a little bit easier I see so this is the, the house uh, inhabited by the people that are related to what's his face the kid that we just met with Professor Rowan problem with these early areas is because it is like a lot of tutorial information there aren't really a lot of items to get so yeah nothing around here to really get okay much later on when we get uh, a rod or the ability to oh wow huh I, I was under the impression that the the um, the water uh, on the south shore of sand gym town started in sand gym town um, but it does not, which means there's actually no Pokemon we can get in Sanjum Town. Eventually, though, we will come back here. Uh, let's see here. Wow, this is a... I forgot how insanely massive the bag was. Also, wait, we don't have any Pokeballs yet? Uh, let's go ahead and let's heal up. It's been it's been a little while, but been, been a little while since I last played Pokemon Platinum. So I don't have a perfect recollection of the order of events in which things happen. Man, I got to say, I have a lot of affection for these games. I think they look pretty good. Looking at the inside of the Pokemon Center right here on the big screen, I am incredibly cognizant of how weirdly angular and polygonal some of the things inside the Pokemon Center are. The, the, the polygons, the polygon count on this PC box is, it's a little disappointing if I gotta be a hundred thousand percent honest, but we'll, we'll, we'll let it, we'll let it fly. All right. <sighs> and here we go, we can start buying some Pokeballs of our own, but I'm actually curious. Do we get some free Pokeballs? Because I feel like it's serious tradition that we will get some free Pokeballs at some point. Here we go. This is I, this is what I predicted wouldn't happen. Oh my god. <sighs> Why, why the fuck do I have to go back to the first town and tell my mom? Come on. 
You know, Pokemon Platinum improved a lot upon the overall kind of speed of Diamond and Pearl, but when people people used to talk back in the day about just how slow and plotting the Pokemon games were, I'm kind of beginning to understand now what they were getting at. I, I was, you know, back in the day so into these experiences that I couldn't really see the, the forest for the trees. But now that I'm actually playing it with like a bit of a fresh perspective, I can see why people were a little bit nonplussed with how slow moving things were. Okay, again, I feel like you could have simplified this, made it, make it, you, you could have made it so that you got both the running shoes and the journal all at once when you left your home for the first time earlier on. No reason to have another, like, uh, this is a touching moment. I, I appreciate them putting something like this in the game, but like, you, you could have simplified it a little bit. All right. Ah, damn. I was about to say, we're about to get through this entire route without encountering another Pokemon, but uh, alas, it was not to be. Excuse me. Hmm. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Silo says, I feel for Lil Bish's mom. Ten-year-old son bounces for like six months to be a trainer and doesn't say a proper goodbye. That sucks. And this is in a this is like just on the cusp before everyone had like a smartphone uh chained to their wrist. And so you know that his mom never really like properly got any correspondence from him. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Of course, it's good old Bidoof. Right, and so he has the third Pokemon within the Trinity, the one that we're really good against. Again, talking about the ways in which the quality of life of the Pokemon games have improved over time, I'm so glad that modern Pokemon games are like, hey, do you want to see a Pokemon catching tutorial? Yes? No? No? All right, perfect. We are not going to slow things down with this slow-ass fight of Turtwig battling a Bidoof. Ugh. <sighs> There we go. This is all that for just five Pokeballs. All right. First things first, we are going back to the previous route so we can catch a uh, Bidoof or Starly, and then we will return back to Route 202 so that we can catch a Bidoof, Starly, or maybe even possibly a Shinx, but most likely a Bidoof or Starly. All right, here we go. Starly time. I will 
I suspect we'll probably be catching a lot of Starly and his evolutions, but I am happier to get Starly or his evolutions over any Bidoof. Come on. The one problem with this Starly is that he is at level two. I feel like in the long run, it might be more convenient for us to just wait to catch a slightly higher level Starly rather than have to kind of train this guy up from basically nothing. But anyways, all right, here we go. It is time to give this guy a name. Uh, we named our good old Chimchar Montreal. I'm going to continue with our Canadian theming here. I'm going to name this dude. Oops, hold on a sec. I almost named him Ottawa. Sorry, I almost named him Ontario, which is the name of the province that Ottawa is in, which is what we are actually going to call this dude. Of course, the capital of Canada. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and let's just seal up just a bit. I suspect we will probably not really be... Using our good pal, uh, what's his face? Man, I already forgot his name. I, I know, I don't know why uh, this immediately came to mind, but I actually know that his Japanese name is Muku Bird. Uh, our beloved Ottawa, let's just call him that. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, Muku Bird is Staravia. I think it's Mukuru. Then it's Muku Bird, and then it's Muku something. I don't remember what, though. Anyways, all right, here we go. We have a good chance of getting a Bidoof or another Starly here. There we go, Starly. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, are we about to have a Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke run where we never encounter, well, no, no, we've already encountered him, but where we never are forced to capture a Bidoof? Is that about to happen? Let's not jinx it. Oh man, I am so excited. Now, what do we want to call this dude? Oh uh, no, fuck. I didn't want to, I didn't want to scratch him again because we could potentially KO him if we're not careful, but I think we might have to. All right, it worked out. And there we go. Shinx is captured. Well, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. All right. Why do we want to call good old Shinxy? You know what? This this Pokemon is giving me a, a bit of a glitz and glamoury feel. He's reminding me of lights and showbiz. I'm going to call this dude New York. And there we go. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't really remember. Are there any? Yes, there are trainers around here. You know what? In that case, I don't know if we're necessarily going to be using our level two Starly all that much, especially considering that we have our rock gym to take care of in just a little bit. But I don't think it would hurt to level up good old uh, New York a little bit. So I will heal him up and I will actually put him at the front of the party. Thank you.
and there we go. Uh, to those of you that are currently watching the stream live, I, I should have mentioned this at the front, but uh, even though I don't have my prize wheel of criticality currently on hand, uh, you can still force me to do some of the things I used to do on stream back when I had it. Um, right now, if you look into my cozy points rewards, uh, you can redeem make me do a shot of hot sauce and um, make me hydrate just a little bit and make me draw a Pokemon from memory. Uh, the amount of those particular rewards that you can redeem per stream are limited because I don't want to be doing them all night, uh, but they are there as options if you are so interested. All right. <sighs> Excuse me. Ooh, this would be great if I had an electric type move, but I don't think I have one. No, I do not. Ooh, I was about to say, wow, that did a lot of damage. It did not do a lot of damage. Thankfully, quick attack there didn't do too much, but... I gotta say, I kind of prefer the the animation for Ember back in the previous gen. I kind of liked that we actually got to see, like, the little wisps of flame going towards the opponent when you would use Ember in that gen. Kind of weird that it's just, like, a small little flame that, like, kind of instantiates underneath the Pokémon that you're fighting. You know what? I should... Maybe I'm being a little bit overly precautious, but I'm going to make sure that Montreal is in tip-top shape and I am going to heal him up just a little bit. Oh boy, here we go. Did more damage than expected. I wonder if I should actually maybe just soften him up a little bit more. Hold on. That would that would have been a really a really rotten spot to get a critical hit inside of. I don't love this. I don't love this one bit. So I don't feel like Ember is doing as much damage as it should. Oh, shit! Whoa wee w With Burn, I suspect that Bidoof can't actually even KO us, even if he had gotten a critical hit there. That was kind of fortuitous. And there we go. New York is at level 4 now. Yay, Montreal's at level five. Look, he received two points in special attack, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and let's check out these natures. All right. Naughty nature, which I don't remember what that does. Serious nature, that's just neutral. Careful nature, uh, I think that's up, like, special defense is increased, but something else is decreased. That, that's one of those ones where, like, I kind of I kind of drop off. I still have Shinx at the front of the party, actually. Oh, 
There we go, level four Shinx. It always sucks when, like, you enter into a route, you capture, like, a level two rat, and then later on in the same exact route, you come across, like, a level five rat, and it's like, couldn't, couldn't I have ca ca captured the level five rat instead? Man, I forgot how massive some of the patches of grass were in this game. This is, if I recall correctly, they're this big because later on in the post game you gain access to that one item that makes it so that it's uh, you're able to more easily capture Pokemon, shiny Pokemon, by running around a whole lot, and you need like a particularly large patch of grass to do so. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, I wanted that to be a one hit KO. We don't need another Bidoof. We really don't. What we need is for New York to finally get to... Damn, again! You know what? I got an idea. Oh, shit, Cricketot. I completely forgot that this guy was hanging around here. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do, ladies and gentlemen? I am gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna take on... Krikatot, because I think he might actually make for some good experience points. I'm actually going to go back into town. I know that I just was complaining about encountering a lot of wild Pokemon, but I do want to get back in town because I see that we have one more trainer up against us, and I feel like it would be worthwhile. Oh dear, I hope that we can get this guy out of the way soon. Oh yeah, not a problem. I want to get some more potions because I don't want us to run into any more issues later on. And there we go, New York is at level 5, but... Well, it did learn Leer. It certainly did learn that, so I can't complain about that. We're almost about to exit this patch of grass, so we might as well take on this Bidoof here. What is with these motherfucking Bidoofs and their motherfucking critical hits? Okay, so I went and pulled up uh, Ye old Bulbapedia again. Careful is... Oh, this is disappointing. Careful means we have increased special defense. I was correct about that. Uh, but it also means we have lowered special attack, which is frustrating because Infernape and his you know, pre-evolved forms uh, famously don't have a lot of defense stats in general, but they do have... Um, quite good attack and special attack. Let's see here. Uh, interesting. So, Shinx has increased attack and decreased special defense. Obviously, it's not great when you have lowered defense, but I mean, increased attack, not that bad. This is actually the the first gen where the uh, like attack defense um, split happened, which means that a, a Pokemon like Shinx can actually really benefit from that. I'm just going to get a couple of these things. I don't think that there are any Pokemon around here that can, like, paralyze or poison us, but... If we are not going to be able to heal during battle, I do at least want to become as prepared as possible as we can be. 
Come on. No Pokemon. Ah. Well, another Shinx, but this time around, our Shinx is higher level than it. Look at that. Oh, no. I still don't want to attack it, though, because we need to uh, conserve our levels for when we take on this dude. God damn it. What fucking Bidoof is coming to tear down my house this time, huh? Alright, here we go. You, sir, don't know just how arduous the trek was to reach you, so I hope that you appreciate this ass-kicking that we're about to give you. Only one Pokémon, and it's a Burmy. Ooh, I gotta say, I wanna say this, I want I want this to be known right here and right now. I forgot how good so much of the sprite work is in these games. Burmy sprite right over here? That is a good fucking sprite. Burmy's evolution is obviously, obviously not that great. I don't know how much I will benefit from being able to use Burmy or, or his evolutions themselves, but you gotta love his sprite. Come on. Oh, there we go. Goodbye to Burmy. Uh, is this another trainer? No, it's not. Yay, we got another potion. Uh-oh, who is this going to be? Oh, hey, it's Krikotot. Well, seeing as how this is easy XP, we might as well take care of it. Yeah, we're real quick second. And there we go. There we go. I knew that an item was hanging out over here, but I did not realize I would have to go and touch it on the wall. Oh, are we gonna... Is this gonna be a rival battle? Well, I guess not. I guess we are just going to be heading towards something or other. Oh, it's Looker! Oh yeah, here we go. Another new element of the Pokémon Platinum experience. I gotta say, it's been a little while since we last saw this dude. The last time we saw him, I want to say, was in Pokémon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where he had developed a case of amnesia. A little bit too bad, because I like this dude quite a bit, and I'm hoping that we can see him once again in the future. Also, has Looker been featured in, like... Has he been featured in, like, any of the Pokémon animes? Like, either the main Pokemon enemy series or any of the weird spin-offs they've done, because it's a crime if he is not, because this guy seems like he would be prime anime fodder material. Also, apparently Looker is only his code name. The thing about Looker is, like, he doesn't even necessarily, like, change, like, the overall plot of the game all that much. He doesn't even really, really play, like, that big of a role in the events at the very end of the game, but 
He's just there, like adding a little bit of like fun little <laughs> spice to this soup. And there goes the liquor. All right, there, there will probably be some more items for us to collect in this particular town that we're in right now, but probably not that many. Here we go. This was uh, the global terminal back in the day because the idea of having a Pokemon game that could connect to the internet was such a cool and unusual little novelty. This was the only place where you could uh, uh, transfer your Pokemon to the global trade station and get all sorts of cool little monsters. I remember back in the day in the days of both Pokemon Diamond and Platinum, uh, putting a few Pokemon up here in the global trade station and getting some uh, Pokemon in return every now and then. And this is before our house even had Wi-Fi of its own. I remember uh, two times uh, putting up like a hunter looking for a Machoke and getting in Machoke in return so I could evolve them into Machamps. That was real special, actually, in retrospect. It is very cool that people heeded my call, especially considering that they could have been assholes about it and, like, given Machamp, like, an Everstone. There's not really a whole lot else to do right now around here. Again, I will still continue to chat with people. Nah, I'm not interested. Oh, look at this. What is this? Poketch. Uh, oh, do I have to go and speak to the people at the trainer's school? I thought that wasn't mandatory. This is the Poketch company. I guess the trainer's school is where I get my Poketch. But it doesn't seem like it's... Doesn't seem like it's necessary though, considering I'm just waltzing into Route 118 without any issue. Oh, but it doesn't seem like there's anything I can do here, so I guess that's that. This is the route later on where, if I recall correctly, you eventually uh, will be able to uh, travel to the city that contains the uh, eighth, not eighth, sixth gym leader. The, the dude that's the older brother of the rock gym leader and has steel type Pokemon. All right, let's see what the trainer school has in store for us. There he is. Yay, we got our town map. Let's see, usually, I remember in the Ruby Sapphire Emerald games, you could get a, um... Oh wait, hold on, there are Pokémon battles here? Well, okay, might as well do it. I was gonna say, I remember in Pokémon Ruby Sapphire Emerald, you could get your hands on a Quick Claw in the Pokémon School, so I am still gonna chat with the people in here on the off chance that we could work out something similar. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna... Level 6, that's a little bit of a higher level than I was anticipating. Ah, you fucking piece of shit. This is gonna screw me over. Okay, it's not that bad, but like... I just 
just need to survive one attack, which shouldn't be difficult, but you never know. And then, actually, hold on, if he has quick attack, he has priority. But he also didn't do a lot of damage, so maybe I'm okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And there we go, Starly is down for the count. Well, look at that. Both of us leveled up. That was a tough little Starly. Well, we learned Taunt. Wow. That is a high-level move over there for this early in the game. Let's see, maybe this Point Dexter over here will have something. Nope, nothing. Uh, damn it. Get me out of this book. Get me out! There we go. Uh, don't worry, I will come back and battle the other trainer in the Pokemon School in just a bit. I do want to... Oh. Uh-oh. Who is this? Okay, so we gotta go ahead and we gotta find three clowns. I vaguely remember this. Vaguely. Before we do that, I am going to just finish things off, battle the other trainer. And then I will find the clouds. Oh no, Bidoof. Don't tell me you're gonna waste an X attack on this dude. Oh, I guess not. What Jesus. Fucking Bidoof here is doping up. And goodbye to Bidoof. wanted that to level him up. All right, I'm going to switch Chimchar to the front of the party. Uh, oh, wait, hold on a second. Are we going to get an item? Ah, oh, damn it. I was really hoping it would be a hold item. I guess not. All right, Montreal, you are going to the front spot. And let's go and chat with some clowns. Now, my understanding is that the clowns are all located, like, uh, on the kind of exterior of the city that we're currently in, right? I don't think that they're in any buildings, maybe? we'll find out. Well, I guess the looker is trying to prevent us from moving any further until we get some stuff. Oh, here we go. Another Sh I did not mean to go here. I did not realize that she was going to battle me. Here's the thing, though. I think I'm going to bet that she has a, ba uh, a Badoo. And, oh, no, she does not have a Badoo. She has a Shinx, and it's level 7, so I am Happy that I put out Montreal first. Mm, something gives me a feeling that the clowns might actually be inside buildings after all. Goodbye, Shinx. Speaking of uh, the sprites in this game being really good, the sprites of the trainers as well. Really solid. Oh, here we go. Number two.
All right, we got one and three. I have a feeling actually two number number two might actually be hanging out somewhere. Here we go. person. There we go. Yay! And we have six apps to start with, right? This is, of course, you know, when people talk about features that the Pokemon games introduce that they then needlessly take away in subsequent generations, the Poketch is up there for sure. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this back in the day. Look at this thing. We have ourselves a calculator. Uh, we have a... Uh, I think this is a step counter, right? Uh, and of course we have our party, which I think I'll, I'll keep it on that for the time being. Just as a convenient way of showing people what we currently have on hand. So it's actually just four apps, but that's okay. Eight more minutes and we will have tonight's snacks and collation segment. Um, and then after that, we will continue on our way. I would like to defeat the Orberg gym before we close out for the evening, but I will admit it is a little bit of a it's a little bit of a hasty schedule. So I don't know if we'll actual actually be able to get around to doing so. Problem is right now we don't have any Pokemon on our team that are like a good counter to the kind of Pokemon that the Orberg gym can throw at us, so... It, it, it's all gonna be kind of dependent on that. Ooh. Good old classic magic art. I'm wondering... You know what? <laughs> Excuse me, I did not mean to cough right there. You know what, if we're going to be battling a Pokemon that literally has no attacking moves, this would actually be a good opportunity to let Ottawa get a bit of experience. Sorry everybody, you're going to be seeing Magikarp do his a signature splash attack for quite a few turns. Actually, you know what? No reason to keep him out, I'm going to just switch back to Montreal. Oh, should not have done that. That was my bad. I mean, it still did a lot of damage, but... go. Of course, it's not enough experience points for Ottawa to level up just yet. That's okay. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, here we go. Who's it going to be? Uh, it's another Shinx. Well, that is too bad. That is very much too bad, but I guess that's how it goes. Unfortunately, we're not yet at the gen where we can earn experience points the same turn that we catch Pokemon on, but I guess this is just what's happening. Ah! I, I want to just weaken him just a little bit. If I do, like, one tackle with Ottawa, maybe I can do this. Ooh. 
Ooh, there we go. I'm gonna do one more, actually. I'm gonna thread this needle real hard. And there we go. Shinx was caught. What do we want to call this Shinx? What do we want to call this dude? Uh, you know what? I know that I'm wasting some pretty high-level names right off the bat, but I feel like it fits. I'm calling this Shinx Chicago. <sighs> Excuse me. Ugh, that was a yawn. Now, are there any items that we can get over here that might be useful? I'm gonna just switch this dude to the front of the party. Here we go. Didn't realize that I would actually be able to reach it at this point. Now, I am surprised. I thought we would have encountered a Bud U by this point. I guess not. Oh, shit. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Our Shanks doesn't have Intimidate, which means that by extension, uh, Rivalry raises attack if the foe is of the same gender. Which is not actually that bad, but it is kind of situational. Well, so both of the Shanks that we captured don't have Intimidate. That's actually... Well, that's a bit of rotten luck. I was kind of hoping that we would have... At least one of the Shanks we would have gotten by this point would have had Intimidate. Do they gain Intimidate when they level up, regardless of whether they had Intimidate earlier on, or do they always... Is it always, like, Rivalry or Intimidate? Because if it's the latter, that's a little disappointing. Uh, another one of those Devil Level Ups, where we both level up within the same battle. Alright. Uh, what is this? Okay, so this is the path that will take us to Orberg Gym. We should actually... Oh, wait a minute. Or is it? Hold on. No, it is not. I'm guessing this is uh, a location that we will probably have to travel to after we've taken on Orberg Gym. Oh, here we go. Zubat, come at us. It's Psyduck. That is unexpected. I thought 100,000% that we were heading into Zubatville with this one. I guess not. Okay, if this... I'm going to throw myself a Pokeball. This Pokeball doesn't land. We only got one ball left, which means I think what I'm probably going to have to do is I am probably going to have to send in Chimchar, or maybe not. I was about to say, I was probably going to have to send in Chimchar and have him do uh, Ember for a weak little Fire-type move to lower his HP a little bit more, but didn't have to do that. I forgot that Psyduck and Golduck are all over this game. Actually, if I remember correctly, one of the first screenshots that we ever had of the game, like, running, was, like, of your, like, trainer character battling a gold duck in the wild. All right. What do we want to call this dude? Miami. Is Miami a good name to call Psyduck or Golduck? Or what about... Oh, I know. I know. I know what we're going to call this dude. We are going to call good old Psyduck Sen. Diego. Keeping you guys on your toes. You thought that I would have given San Diego to like a ground or a rock type Pokemon, but oh no. Psyduck is getting the honor instead. Now it's pretty good that we actually got Psyduck on our team because this dude will actually potentially, potentially prove a pretty invaluable asset against the upcoming Orberg gym battle. Um, 
So let's go ahead and let's begin leveling up a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so we have a trainer uh, that has a Badu. But could we have encountered Badu in the grass underneath us? I know I'm, I'm pronouncing his name weird, but like, I don't really know how else you can say it. God damn. I re Do you guys remember when growth nearly ruined our run at the very end of our Pokemon Leaf Green run? Fucking shit. Fuck the prize wheel for nearly screwing us over. But here we go, a Pokemon that has water sport that actually has a real reason to actually own it and use it. As opposed to it just being owned by, like, water-type Pokemon that already resist fire-type moves. Now, Psyduck and his evolution definitely learned their fair share of water-type moves. What I don't remember is what level are we going to have to get San Diego to to learn his first one, though? Because there's part of me that's wondering if this is one of those cases where I'm going to have to level him up all the way to, like, level, like, 15 or something to learn, like, Water Gun. I don't think that's the case, but I would not be surprised if that were to be it. That being said, I do feel like this game has definitely been better so far at making it so that our Pokemon are learning kind of type uh, coverage moves a little bit faster. It was great that we learned uh, Ember for Chimchar at like level 7. That was good. Yay! Okay, well not exactly a water type move, but it is good to have more you know, a little bit more type coverage. Is Looker still going to be hanging out here like a big old creepo? No, he is not. All right, here we go. Oh, is this another rival fight? Well, I, I had completely forgotten about this. Well, I am happy that we healed up a little bit earlier. And this game is pretty talkative. I, I know I already complained about this earlier, but again, I can definitely understand in retrospect now why a lot of people were kind of down on how chatty these games were. Um... I want to give it to New York, or I want to give it to Montreal. I'll give it to... You know, actually, New York might be better for when he sends out Piplup, so I will send out Montreal here. Yeah, this actually ended up working out well, because I can pretty much just bypass that by using a little bit of fire. Ooh. Yeah, Piplup might know a water type move or two at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch into New York. Now, let's see, Piplup are fighting a... No, it's not. We've not encountered any other Pokemon of the same gender as us so far. We've not been able to see rivalry in action. Uh, Cozy Game Dev says, Roasted Mito. I mean, what can I say? Mito had it coming. Mito tried its hardest to prove its worth, but in the end, it just didn't matter. Okay, this is going to very quickly become a war of attrition, but... I am gonna I'm gonna keep going with New York as long as I possibly can and then I will I, don't know, 
I guess I'll probably switch out to Chimchar, who hopefully will be able to take care of Piplup without too much issue. God damn, how many times in a row has he used that? That would have been four. Now five, wow. Is the AI just like programmed to be like real dumb or real annoying? Hmm. I'm gonna swap into San Diego. He's a little bit lower level, but if Piplup uses Bubble or a Water Gun, it basically won't have any effect. Or Pound, I guess? I'm, uh, I'm surprised he doesn't have any Water type moves at this point. Oh, here we go. He didn't even want to use another follow-up pound on Psyduck. Oh, God. Why the fuck are you doing this? Just fucking attack me, man! Oh, this would be a fantastic opportunity to get a critical hit. I just want to say this right here, right now. Video game, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me, but this would be a fantastic time to get a critical hit. You know what I mean? Just a fantastic time to get a critical hit. Just a fantastic time. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hmm? I, I bet the game is trying to psych me out. It's trying to trick me into sending out Chimchar, thinking that Piplup is just going to use Pound on it, and then it's going to whip out the Bubble Beam and Water Gun and just completely eviscerate me. That's its strategy. That's what it's going. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to swap out to Montreal for this one and pray to God that Piplup doesn't unexpectedly use Bubble or Water Gun on this turn. Goodbye. W okay, okay, okay. You had to get a critical hit on the absolute last turn when it didn't actually even matter anymore. What the fuck? some more trainers, but we're kind of a little bit more banged up right now than I would like to be. All right. Uh, you know what, actually? You know what, actually? Let's get as much out of this route as we possibly can before we do another Pokemon Center run. Let's see who we can encounter in the grass over here. Is it going to be a Bidoof? Is our streak going to break? Fucking fuckle fuckle fuck. It's a Bidoof. Well, I guess... I guess it was only inevitable. Oh, wait a minute. We only have one Pokeball in our bag right now, which means we actually only have one opportunity of catching this dude. Guys, this is going to be real close. This will be a good excuse to go back into town after this, actually. Uh, a comparison revealed that Bidoof's front teeth grow at the same rate as Rattata's. Wow, that is pretty lame of Bidoof. You, you'd think that it would be like a comparison revealed that Bidoof's front teeth grow at like five times the rate of Rattata's, that the Pokédex entry would be like, look at how 
fucking ubermensch the doof is, but it's not even that. It's just, oh yeah, it's as powerful as a ratata. What do we want to call this dude? Um... Hmm, what is a good Bidoofy city name? You know what? We're gonna call this dude Laval. It's a, a little bit of Montreal humor for you. All right, uh, before we go any further, I'd like to remind everybody that is currently watching the stream that you can, of course, catch these streams live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST here on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live. Uh, I appreciate however it is that you choose to get back to the show, be it by following, subscribing, or even tossing an honest to goodness tip my way. But if you don't have any loonies or toonies to spare, it's all good because I will still be here no matter what. Uh, until we continue with our stream, let's go ahead and let's have ourselves a little snacks collation segment. On tonight's installment of Snacks and Collation, we have something very extra special for you. It's not even, I mean, I don't know. L let's just trot this thing out here. Let's just show what we're dealing with tonight. We are going to be having Men Guys Cocktail Olives. Now, the, the, the name of the company again is Men Guys, but I don't think it's meant to be like men and guys. I think that's it's like a French name and it's meant to m mean something else. All the instructions on the back are in uh, French and I want to say German. So, yeah, that's what's currently going on. As I talked about earlier on in the stream, I'm still doing my whole 30 uh, little, you know, diet thingamabob, which means that I can't have any sugars, uh, any processed grains or any dairy. So I had to find another snack that would fulfill those criteria. And I mean, I can't claim that this doesn't fulfill them. Uh, ingredients, uh, pitted green, pink and black olives. Uh, Lupin, I have no clue what that is, uh, but it doesn't seem like a grain or a sticker. Um, bell peppers, salt, chili, sunflower oil, spices, and brine. So yeah, nothing that we need to worry about for our dietary concerns. Yeah, this is not really something that you're like really meant to eat as like a snack, like 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 as in something like a like a finger food kind of snack. But I mean, we have it in front of us, so I guess we might as well dig in. Um, Hmm, I don't know. How are we going to open this? Let's see here. Do we just... I guess we can just kind of pull this through? Oh no, this is a disaster waiting to happen. I think... I think that we need to grab ourselves a pair of scissors. Give me just a second, I will be right back. Ta-da! We have ourselves of scissors let's see if we can do this we're just gonna make a, a small little incision in this thing so we can pour the olives out without its entire top being busted open uh, here we go here we go all right uh first things first before we pour this out we have to do of course uh, the bouquet see just what this thing smells like it smells like olives. And you know what? You know what? I, I never thought I would say this, but this doesn't smell that bad. It doesn't smell that bad. This smells like a delicious piece of pizza that just came out of the oven that had olives on it as a topping. This doesn't taste that bad at all. Holy shit, guys. I think we're in for something special tonight here. Let's go ahead and let's uh, pour some of them into this uh, conveniently placed bowl that I just had on hand. Oh, fuck. Shit, I knew there would be, I knew there would be uh, liquid coming out of this thing. I didn't expect that so much liquid would come out at once. I thought it would be a little bit more even. Well, now I guess now it's just all liquid. Oops, all liquids. Uh, maybe I actually should have just... Maybe I should have just cut off the entire top of this thing. This is a hazard waiting to happen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. All right.
And there we go. There's actually... Hmm. Doesn't look like there are as many olives in the bowl as there were in the bag, but maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. Well, this is certainly very different from back when I was eating different multicolored Haribo gummies. Uh... Again, continues to smell not that bad. Reminds me a lot of olives on pizza. Um, well, I guess we might as well just dig in. I'm going to try to not get too much liquid on my fingers, but I know it's inevitable. We're going to start off with one of the green ones. Ugh. Hmm. Ugh. Oh! Wow, that got progressively worse the, the, the further it went on. Wow, okay. Okay, that was... That was an experience. That was an experience. But maybe we'll have a little bit more luck with some of the other colored olives. I think I tend to prefer purple olives over green olives. So let's go ahead and let's have ourselves a purple olive and see if there's any improvement to be had. Okay, immediately... Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nope. Ah, nah, that was not good. Okay, we are two for two right now. Are we going to go three for three? Are we going to have another olive that just completely ruins our day? I mean, I guess there's no choice in the matter. This is a beige ash little olive over here. Ah, this is going to be horrible, but we have to go through with it. For science. That was really weird. Unlike the prior two olives, that olive wasn't very firm. It kind of like melted in my mouth as I was eating it. It was not as bad as the prior two ones, but it was just very weird. Um, there are a few little things that are hanging out in this little bowl that we're currently looking at that are not olives. We actually have a couple of red peppers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just indulge in one of these just to see how that changes up the weird funky ass formula we're dealing with. Okay, it, it, the, the, the oliviness of the rest of the dish kind of infected it, but not that badly. Uh, and finally, we have some beans. I, I think they're lima beans. I don't really know beans all that well, but we got to try it. Ugh. I thought that would be like nice and mushy, but it was not nice and mushy, but it's not that bad. It's not that good either. It doesn't really have much of a taste. All right. Well, I will say this. These cocktail olives are not as bad as the bagged uh, pickles that we had a few streams ago. Um, but that is not a particularly high bar to clear. I'm going to give these guys... I don't want to give half points. I was going to say like a 2.5 out of 10 because I know that we definitely gave one of the pickles like a 2 out of 10. Nah, you know what? I'm going to give them a 2 out of 10. They're not a complete abomination, but they suck. D don't bother. Don't bother. Even if you're the kind of person that likes a nice charcuterie and enjoys French olives with your charcuterie, just get something else. Get something else. All right. Let's go ahead and let's get back into the game. Uh, I'm going to have to very carefully put this away to make sure that I do not accidentally spill it anywhere. So I'm going to have to make sure that I toss that stuff as soon as I remember to. All right. <laughs> yes, please. Now, the good thing about Bidoof is that, you know, he's kind of a a meme-ass sucky Pokemon, but he does evolve into the Barrel, which is a Pokemon that has access to a lot of different moves and himself is part water type, which actually makes him like not bad against the upcoming gym battle we're, we're going to have. So it wouldn't hurt to kind of have him, you know, on call as a Pokemon that we're kind of leveling him up, but 
Our priority for the upcoming gym battle is going to be these three dudes. And these two dudes can just sort of bench warm a little bit at the bottom for a little bit. Uh, San Diego, let's get this guy up to the front. There we go. Oh, I thought she was going to be a trainer. Uh, this guy's a trainer, though. Frickitot and Zubat. Well, I appreciate him calling out up front what Pokemon he was going to be challenging us with. I'm just curious. Frickitot's like a pretty weak Pokemon, so I don't mind experimenting a little bit with him. How well do my scratches do? That's actually not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see. I want to see how far I can go here. Uh... A cozy game dev says, do you think you olive after the snack? I honestly don't know, cozy game dev. Some of these questions are just not meant to be answered. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Unfortunately, there's no way for me to avoid taking damage from Krikatot at this point. But while he's biding his energy, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a couple of tail whips. help even the odds a little bit. Unfortunately, I, I definitely am... <sighs> Again? Fuck you. Okay. Crap. I don't think... Damn it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch into Montreal for this one. I was gonna say, I, I thought... I was thinking that maybe we could have finished it off with another scratch, but I don't think we were gonna be able to do so. I never thought we would actually have to be, like, really cautious about Bide. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Yay! Zubat. Uh, yeah, I'll send out San Diego, but I will switch back out to Shinx. Oh, that's right. We should probably... Uh, I, I forgot when we went back to town, we should have gotten ourselves another uh, thing of Pokeballs. I guess we'll, we'll have another opportunity to do so when we go to whatever town is next. So on, on the subject of... Um, Psyduck's usefulness in this gen, or actually, I'm pretty sure this is true of the prior gens as well, Psyduck and Golduck can learn uh, Psychic-type moves, which is pretty useful, because normally Psychic Pokémon can be a little bit on the elusive side. we go. Gotta love how fast the levels are coming at this point. Oh, here we go. Charge. Something that will make up for our lagging special defense. Unfortunately, we don't have any electric type moves that we can use at the at this point in the game that will take advantage of charge. Hey, we got ourselves a Pokeball, so that's nice. Okay. Uh... I don't feel like going back to a Pokemon Center, so let's use some potions. Alright, we got another Shinx on our hands.
and there we go. Oh, uh, wow, well, I was not expecting this battle so fast. All right. Okay, we gotta be careful with this dude, because this guy can actually do a little bit of damage to us if we are not careful. I'm gonna actually put Sad Diego to use a little bit here. I'm gonna use Tail Whip. Oh. Weaken Machop's defenses a little bit. I don't think that Machop at this stage has any attacking moves. Hold on, let's check this out here. Let's see here. Um... <laughs> Let's see, defense 13, defense 16, but they're not perfectly healed up. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Let's send in New York. Eventually, at some point, I will have to switch out. But let's just put on the pressure for now. I'm hoping that this doesn't blow up in my face. Okay, okay, low kick, low kick. That's... All right, I think we can get through this. Low kick, um, it's a very weak fighting type move uh, whose damage is calculated uh, by the um, weight of the Pokemon it is currently battling, which means that if it is battling a very light Pokemon like our New York, it doesn't do a lot of damage, uh, which means that I think that we can actually Switchly safe into uh, Switchly uh, safely. Sorry, safely switch into Montreal for this one. I know that his uh, defense is lowered, but I'm gonna use an Ember. See how that goes. Oh yeah, we're good. We are good. The only question is, oh shit, critical hit. Where do we get a Machop of our own? Because Machop, ladies and gentlemen, would actually be real useful against the uh, Rock-type gym that we are going to be going up against soon. I'm going to be just a little bit careful. Oh, I'm glad that I was careful. Oh wait, is she even a trainer? I think she might not be, actually, but we'll see. Oh, turns out she is a trainer. Okay, well, I'm glad that I healed up What's-His-Face. Well, a level four Bidoof? Okay. Well, don't mind if I do. Goodbye, Badoof. Oh, here we go, Badoo. But, oh, okay, I get it. So she has a bunch of weak Pokemon because she has... All her Pokemon are at level 4 because she has many of them. Okay. Does Badoo have Absorb at this low of a level? Well, I'm about to find out and potentially pay dearly for it. Oh, shit! Fuck, I think that Psyduck is dead. Oh, or maybe not. I think I, um, I underestimated how weak the dew was, but I think I will be switching out San Diego after this. Interesting. So I'm not getting a, an attack boost right up front. So I guess I guess the, the attack boost that I gained from rivalry is just like a back end thing. It, 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 I don't like get like a like a stat boost right up right up front. Okay. Okay.
Ooh, here we go. But I think this dude might only have... Something gives me a feeling that Abra might be a little bit easy to take down. Do I want to risk it with Scratch? You know what? Fuck it. We gotta live a little bit. Abra, do your worst. ourselves seems like one more trainer before the cave okay Let's see anyone else that we need to heal up a little bit actually if anyone if there's any money that we need to heal up it's actually san diego this has been a it's been quite the trooper all right let's go Here we go. Battle of the Psyducks, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Uh, I think he's a little bit stronger than me. Damn it. Well, at this point, there's no worth... Not, no worth in potentially endangering San Diego, so we're going to switch back up to New York. Goodbye. that I didn't think I would be able to reach it right. no electric type moves yet though well, here we go we have the possibility to get ourselves an item and then uh, something or other how much damage will scratch do here Oh, fuck! Well, thank God we're still alive. Uh, I'm switching into Montreal. Unfortunately, because we can't use any items in battle, that Axe Defend is actually literally useless, which means that we actually can sell it without any issue once we get the opportunity to do so. <laughs> Excuse me. Come on. All right, no need to battle you. All right, we are going to head into town. We are going to heal up our Pokemon at the Pokemon Center, and we are going to grab some more potions and some more Pokeballs at the Pokemart, just so that we are well stocked going into the cave that we are about to head to so we don't miss out on the opportunity to capture ourselves a Geodude and or Zubat, preferably a Geodude, because we've not really gotten a good Geodude in a while. 
Okay. first. And that should be about good. Who is she? Oh, is she just TMs? Oh no, she's males and heal balls? Oh, oh. You know what? For the novelty of it, let's go ahead. Let's get ourselves a heal ball. Why not? Could actually be situationally useful, considering that we can't heal in the middle of battle. All right. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Before we head out here, we actually never explore this building. Anything going on in here that we should know about? Oh, well, fucking shit. Earlier I said, hey, it would be great if we get get the quick claw around here, but I was not expecting it to be inside here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Who will benefit most from the Quick Claw? <sighs> Too many pockets. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna give this a Psyduck. I think that he'll appreciate it. This is just temporary. Alright, here we go. Ah, come on! Come the fuck on! Don't block me like that! Here we go. Oh, here we go. I think we have a trainer in battle up ahead? I completely forgot. We have the underground in this game to eventually get to. That's going to be exciting. Yay! Oh shit, it's Rock Smash, which is actually kind of a not bad, kind of useful move for the upcoming gym battle. Uh, of course, we can't use it outside of battle just yet. All right, who's it going to be? Another Psyduck. Not, I mean... I can't really complain because we Psyduck is a useful Pokemon for this upcoming gym, but you know. It's certainly more useful than Starly. Psyduck is... God. What do we want to call this to? I feel like San Francisco would be a little bit too long of a name. Oh, I know. We'll call this dude... San... Jose. See, unfortunately, we're blocked over there. Eventually, well, one thing I will say is I do appreciate how insanely intricate and interconnected all the tunnel systems are in these games. It's actually quite, quite impressive in this gen. Mount Coronet itself is like a beast. <sighs> you know, you know, getting a Zubat might have added a little bit more diversity to our team, but I'm actually glad that didn't happen. Actually, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not going to bother to fight Zubat.
Here we go. If he was a little bit in a little bit more tip-top shape, I would just keep him out, but I think it's better if we have New York deal with this one. Ah, uh, you bitch! Yeah, Rosette Mido. You know what? If we if we catch another one more Starly at any point in the game from this point on, I will break with our our naming scheme of calling all of our Pokemon after city names and call at least one of them Mido. I think he's deserving of it. By the way, uh, fun fact about the name Mido: it's actually it's originally in the original Japanese version of the game meant to be pronounced Mido, because it's derived from the Japanese word Midori, which means green, because, of course, Mido within Ocarina of Time is clad in green, like a lot of the other people that inhabit Kukiri Forest. There we go. Fucking top notch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our trump card on our team at long last. Well, funny you should mention that, Cozy Game Dev, because Midoriya, uh, his name, the, the Midori part of his name is also derived from the Japanese name for green. The whole thing with Midori within the uh, Boku no Hero or My Hero Academia anime is that he has a very kind of green aesthetic to him. He has green hair and a lot of his uh, attacks and his, his like costume itself are very green themed. And his name, Midori, Ya, is reflective of that. Well, you know what? After this battle, I should probably save just to be certain. I got so excited that I used a useless move. Come on. I don't know what's going on with Bidoof here. Of course, uh, you can use Defense Curl. What? Oh, here we go. It's Quick Claw activating. Of course, you can use um, Defense Curl and Rollout as a combo to perform a stronger rollout up front, but I guess Bidoof is not interested in doing that. Here we go, Orberg City. I forgot that the music in the city is this intense. And there, you saw it in the lower left corner, those were little air vents uh, for when you travel underground. Oh yeah, I forgot. This guy's dad is like one of the heads of the uh, battle frontier in the game. I completely forgot about that. All right, we have a whole lot of houses that we can interact with, potentially people that we can get items from. I'm 
gonna chat with a few people just to see if we can get anything good, and then I will head to the old Pokemon Center. Oh, here we go. You would be able to get something interesting. Shop for your Abra. That's actually a tempting trade. I wonder, I, do, do the rules of Nuzlocke prevent you, prevent you from doing in-game trades? Because I would be interested in that, if only for, like, the sheer power that something like Kadabra can hold. Even when it's not fully evolved, it's quite powerful. And of course, this is the museum where eventually later on we'll be able to evolve, not evolve, but revive some fossil type Pokemon, which is neat. Right, we're going to need to do a little bit of training in Orberg Mine. Here we go. Well, it's a great ball. I. I mean, I don't not appreciate getting these Pokeballs, but more battle items are preferable. All right, let's go ahead and let's heal at the Pokemon Center and make some more progress. Also, can we travel north at all at this point? We can't, we can actually, not only can we travel north, well, we can't progress past that one little slope. Uh, actually, you know what? You know what? Let's go ahead, before we heal up, let's capture whatever Pokemon we can potentially get from this patch of grass, and then we will heal ourselves to death. I think there's a Pokemon up ahead. Oh, shit! Ladies and gentlemen, we have our second MVP of the upcoming gym battle right here. Now, Machop's low kick is not all that powerful of a move, but considering that we're going to be battling a lot of pretty heavy Rock-type Pokémon in the gym, it can actually come in pretty useful. It seems like Psyduck's a little bit heavier than most. I do have a Dusk Ball that I can always use, but... Do I want to immediately use it? Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I want to speed this up. Dusk Ball, let's go. want to call this guy? Hmm. What are some cool-ass names that we can give this guy? You know what? I know what we can call this dude. We're gonna call this dude Madrid. And there we go. Uh-oh, who are we going to encounter this time? Oh, another Pokémon we actually might have appreciated, but... I suspect we can probably catch one in the Orberg Mine. Goodbye to Geodude.
All right, now, there are so many Pokemon trainers hanging out in the Pokemon centers in this game. Oh, what the hell is going on? What the, what the hell is going on? Why are we constantly going from box to box like this? What the fuck is going on? What? Uh, are you okay, Cozy Game Dev? <laughs> oh, you mean the... Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's like that one... That one town in, like, Scotland or... Scotland or whatever. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Oh my god. Can I fucking... Uh... No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this. I think what's going on is I think that my... It's not, it's not that my emulator is glitching. I think it's actually my controller that's glitching out. And I think it has to do with whatever my controller inputs were for the L and R buttons. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. We got it to fix. I don't know. I, I literally just like reset the button configs for my L and R buttons and somehow that did it. Uh, but that was scary. That was real scary for a second, because for a second it seemed like I wasn't going to be able to exit my box, and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> is this going to actually fuck us over? All right. see here. Well, I mean, I appreciate you appreciating me, but I don't know. I don't know. I think that it would have been great if you'd given me an item. All right. Okay, so we're gonna have to head down to Orberg Mine. Actually, hold on. We never actually properly healed at the Pokemon Center, so let's do that. There's an item over there. Two items over there. Holy shit. Ladies and gentlemen, we just hit the jackpot. We got a dire hit, another item that we can actually use, and a yellow shard, which we actually can use, but it will be a while until we can do so. Here we go. Oh, I forgot that the music here is actually kind of scary. Uh-oh, here we go. Who's it going to be? It's Zubat! <sighs> I mean, we might as well go ahead and capture it. There will be other trainers that we will have to battle in the future that having a Zubat around for will actually be useful, so... Now, what are we gonna want to call this dude? I was thinking for a second we could call him Gotham. But, obviously, Gotham is a fictitious place, and we're trying to go with the names of real cities here. Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> Does anybody know what the capital of Romania is? Hold on, I'm gonna look this up, because I think this might actually be worthwhile. Romania... Capital. Uh, the capital of Romania is Bucharest, alright. This dude is getting called Bucharest. chat with this dude. I don't think we're gonna have enough time to take on Rourke. Oh shit, Onyx. I would have much preferred this dude. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have time to uh, take on the gym leader by the end of the stream, and I don't think we will be powerful enough, but I do think we will at the very least be able to meet up with him and open up the gym again. If it's, if it's a Geodude or Onyx, I'll just immediately take them down, but if it's a Zubat, I will run. Because there is no need for me to waste any time on them. I always thought it was a little bit of um, a little bit of a waste that Psyduck is gold, but Golduck is blue. It should have been the other way around. It should have been that Psyduck is blue. And gold duck is gold. I know that's a little bit on the nose, but like I feel like that would have been much preferable. Actually, you know what? If I'm battling all these rock type trainers over here, I actually should give Geodude a little bit of a chance. I know that I have to train up Psyduck to get him into workable shape for the gym, but. Also, a little bit disappointing, Golduck, Psyduck only evolves into Golduck at level 33. Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to swap Madrid to the front of the party for this. Don't worry, we will greet him in just a second, but we need to take down some other Pokemon first. Ah, oh, goddammit. The first Pokemon that I switch over to for Madrid is a Zubat. Goddammit. It's not like it even does that much damage, I just don't wanna... I don't wanna deal with it! Come on! One damage! Your life is better than this! Let me go! Uh, there we go. Ooh, here we go. It's a nice low level Geodude, so this is a, a good little challenge for us, actually. Look at that, you gotta love an instantaneous level up. Ooh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep him in for this, but I suspect we'll probably want to switch out.
God damn, you gotta love all the leveling up so far. Man, life is so good to me right here and right now. There is no way that this run is gonna disappoint me. No way that my heart is gonna be broken, gonna be shattered, gonna be torn asunder by some unexpected plight that will just break me to my very core. No way. Uh, I am ready for this one. There we go. And there we go. That is Rourke. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exit the cave and that will be it for tonight's stream. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. This was a real fun start to this run. It's a little bit slow moving, so I am going to look into speeding things up a little bit come the future. But so far, I am having fun and I don't find my self-imposed rule of not being able to use a... Um, TM in the middle of battle that bad, but or, or rather any item in the middle of battle that bad, but we'll see when it will inevitably fuck us over, because you know it will. But until then, I have been having all tons of funs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, almost. I almost leveled up to nine. Hold on, maybe we can accomplish this before we exit the gym. No, well, or maybe not. All right, well, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save before I forget to do so. Oh, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to close out the stream like that tonight. I don't think that this is a particularly raidy kind of mood for the time being, but maybe in the future. Thanks to Tuples, thanks to Cozy Game Dev, thanks to all you people. Silos, CTO the bro, y'all are good folks. Y'all are good folks. All right. Don't forget that, of course, you can catch VODs of my past streams on YouTube, uh, on my personal YouTube channel, Cozy Bear, where they publish uh, every Wednesday and Saturday at 3.30 p.m. EST. And don't forget that, of course, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Alex Cozina, A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A, if the tweets and the twits are more your speed. Till next time, have a good, fantastic night.